Hello, everybody, and welcome to this first worship service of the Pendleton First Christian Church in this new year, 2021. Today is the second and final Sunday of the Christmas season in the church calendar year. Last Sunday was the first Sunday of Christmas, and before that we celebrated the four Sundays of Advent and Christmas Eve. It's hard to believe that 45 Sundays have passed since my congregation was last able to safely meet for in-person worship in our church sanctuary. That's just seven Sundays short of an entire year. And for every one of those Sundays, I've been putting together these videos to help keep us connected in worship. I know that all of us look forward to the day when we can come together and meet and worship face to face, side by side, and celebrate in glorious fellowship the wonderful nature of God's love and grace through Jesus Christ. In the meantime, I'll continue to produce these weekly worship videos until such time when we can safely meet together in person again. Today's service recognizes the beginning of a new year for us. Whereas 2020 was a year fraught with challenge and pain, we are prayerful that 2021 will be a year that is filled with hope, peace, love, and gratitude. Despite the challenges we face, there's much to be grateful for. And speaking of gratitude, I'm thankful that I can share with you an idea that was passed along to me this past week by one of my friends from back in high school days, Maureen Von Castaneda. Here on the screen, you can see a photo of a thankfulness jar that Maureen has set up in her home. Maureen told me that she and her family put notes of gratitude in this jar all throughout the year, and then they opened their notes to read them on New Year's Day. She said despite the challenges faced in 2020, she and her family still found things to be thankful for. Wow, what a great idea, Maureen. Thank you for sharing it with me and for your permission given to me to share it with others. I have here a container that Wendy and I will use to place our expressions of gratitude in throughout this year. This crystal bowl was given to Wendy and me by a very dear lady, Carrie Hundley, from the very first church I served in ministry back in the late 70s and early 80s. So every time Wendy or I place a slip of paper in this bowl conveying our gratitude, we will think fondly of Carrie, who was such a good and dear friend those many years ago. Today, I placed a slip of paper in this bowl giving thanks for the contributions that many of you have given over the past year to support the mission and ministry of the church family I serve. Words alone can't express the depth of my gratitude. I only hope that you know how deeply appreciated you are for such gifts and expressions of love and support that you've contributed, and I'm grateful for your prayers. I'm certain that by the end of 2021, there will be many slips of paper placed in this bowl, giving thanks for your generosity, your support, your prayers, your friendship, and our relationship as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Now, with regard to today's worship service and those that will come in the next two Sundays, these next few videos will be a bit different in format from previous recorded services. And this is due to my being away from the church office on study leave for two weeks. So I don't have the opportunity to video people doing various parts of the service as usual. Instead, I'll utilize what I have available at the time that I produce these services in my home recording studio. Now, as a special treat, Pat Morris has provided us with another special music number on the bells. As today is the second and final Sunday of the Christmas season, I think Pat's chosen number is quite appropriate. Joy to the world. May joy find its way into your hearts and homes this holy season of Christmas and throughout the new year to come. Oh, 
I almost forgot to tell you about something else I placed in my gratitude bowl. Contained in my bowl is a slip of paper giving thanks for the contributions of C.M. Puppetry. Several times in the past many months, C.M. Puppetry has contributed puppet skits to bless our time in worship. Well, today I have the pleasure of sharing one of their more recent videos for us to enjoy. If you have children in your home, make sure they are with you to watch this next presentation centered around a well-known Bible story that was special to Jesus. And then next week, we can look forward to a sequel to today's skit. Good morning. This is Rosie Reporter for The Way to TV. I'm out in this field talking to a shepherd who watches over 100 sheep. Thank you, Rosie Reporter, for coming out to my field. You said that you wanted to see my sheep. May I introduce you to Keegan? Wow, he names his sheep. Are you really the shepherd with 100 sheep? And you have named them all? Yes, I am the shepherd with 100 sheep. And of course I named them all. How can I call them to me? without a name. Well, what about just sheep? No, no, no. Everyone has their own name. Come, follow me and meet the rest of my sheep. Wow, there are so many of them. How do they know that you are calling them? My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. There's uh, Wyatt bah, and Ellie, bah, Kelly Jo, bah, and Lizzie, bah, and... Bah, bah, oh, no. Bah, Something is scaring bah, my sheep. Something is scaring bah, my sheep. Bah, what? Bah, 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 bah. Did you hear that? Yes. Now, I'm scared too. Let's run away right now. Bah. My sheep can't bah, run fast enough. Bah, I must protect my ah, sheep. Well, I'm getting out of here right now. I must protect my sheep. Get back, you bad wolf. Get back. Are you crazy? That wolf will bite you. You could die trying to save your sheep. Get back, wolf. Go away. I won't let you have my sheep. Go away. Wow. He did it. You drove the wolf away. You really are ready to die for your sheep. Yes. Yes, I am. Folks, we have just witnessed an astonishing act. This shepherd cared more for his sheep than for his own safety. While I ran away, he stayed and fought off a terrible wolf. This is an act of sacrifice that we should never forget. Shepherd, do you have anything more to say? My sheep also ran away. I must go now and gather them back from my field. This is Rosie Reporter for The Way to TV. Okay, boys, that's a wrap. Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5 and verse 14. I'll share that text from the New International Reader's Version of the Bible. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all humankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. There ends the Gospel reading for today's message. Christmas Day is over, but the season of Christmas hasn't yet come to an end. Some people perhaps don't realize that we are still in the Christmas season. The 12 days of Christmas began on Christmas Day and continues 11 days thereafter until the day of Epiphany, which takes place this year on Wednesday, January 6th. You see, Christmas Day is preceded by the season of Advent, which encompasses the period of time including the four Sundays prior to Christmas and the day just before Christmas, or Christmas Eve day as we know it. The season of Christmas begins on December 25th, and ends with the twelfth day after Christmas. And that's what the song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, alludes to. And that's when the season of Epiphany begins, this next Wednesday, January 6th. So Christmas Day is the day we celebrate the birth of Jesus, followed twelve days later by Epiphany Day, which celebrates the visit of the Magi, or, or the wise men. Those wise men came bringing gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, to the child Jesus. Now, another bit of trivia worth noting is that Luke's gospel includes the account of the shepherds who first visited the infant Jesus after hearing the pronouncement of his birth by the angels from heaven. And Matthew's gospel includes the account of the wise men from the east who followed a star until they found the child Jesus in Bethlehem. And by the time the magi, or the wise men, arrived, Jesus was perhaps as old as two years of age. So Matthew provides us with one account of the Christmas story, which includes the visit of the Magi. And Luke gives us another account of the Christmas story, which includes the caroling of the angels and the visit of the shepherds. These are two well-known Christmas stories and often are featured in pageants around the world. But did you know that there's a third Christmas story that's told by John in the gospel that bears his name? And before the season of Christmas is over, this next Tuesday at midnight, I'd like to share something of significance from John's account. You heard me read it before. I'll read it again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This is how the Gospel of John begins in the first verse of the first chapter. A Christmas pageant based on the Gospel of John would be a godsend to any church on a very tight budget. You see, there'd be no need for bathrobes or cardboard crowns, no manger filled with straw, no foil-covered boxes representing gold, frankincense, and myrrh. No actors would be necessary either. All one would need is a single candle. The church would be bare and dark, void of all furniture and decorations. The only thing visible would be a small, unlit candle standing upright in the middle of the floor. The congregation could file in and sit for quite a long time. They'd sit long enough to feel uneasy in the silence, and maybe even a little intimidated by the darkness. And then, after a considerable time, someone could rise and walk quietly toward that single candle. And with a single flame, the darkness would be invaded, shoved back by the one thing that has power to drive all darkness away, the light. And that would be that. No one, though, would seriously ever try to put on a Christmas pageant based on John's Gospel. But by my mere suggestion of it, you can see how different John's Christmas story is compared with Matthew's and Luke's. There's no music, no costumes or pageantry, just one undeniable truth ablaze. A single statement so profound that perhaps the only way to appreciate it is to sit in subdued darkness and watch the candlelit shadows flicker across the ceiling. 
and be reminded, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Even the smallest solitary flame can accomplish that. No amount of darkness can make the light of a single candle retreat even one millimeter or one inch. In the beginning was the Word, John's Gospel says. Perhaps you've heard the phrase, talk is cheap. But that's not the way it is in the Bible. You see, words in Holy Scripture can become living things. In Genesis chapter 1, God spoke a word and creation came into being. In Psalm 33 verse 6 says, By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and all their host by the breath of God's mouth. And according to Isaiah chapter 40 verse 8, The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. God's word is incredibly unending. Some words we speak are so casual and automatic, they can easily be overlooked or quickly forgotten. For example, when meeting someone in the grocery store or on the street, we might casually say, Good morning, how's life? Or, Howdy, how you doing? Generally speaking, such words fly effortlessly from our mouths and rarely elicit a thoughtful or sincerely honest response. But then, there are other words that bring us to our knees. Words that come down hard like a load of logs falling off of a flatbed semi-truck. Words, for example, that come from a doctor's lips. When he or she says, I'm sorry to inform you, the cancer test was positive. Or, I regret to report that you've tested positive for COVID. Such words as these make a very different impact on our lives. They strike us hard as though blasted by a firearm into the very core of our being. They make the dividing line clear between life as it once was and life as it will never be again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Him was life. And that life was the light of all humankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Word became flesh and dwelt dwelt among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. You see, this is what John's Gospel says. And what does that mean for us? What does that mean for you? I believe that John is saying that God's word is found in a person, and this person brings life. This person has been introduced to us in the gospel stories. If we want to know who the true God is, if we want to know what the true God says, if we want to discover life in all its abundance as God intends for it to be, look long and hard at Jesus. There's a large number of people who have experienced the death of a loved one and find themselves facing holidays such as Thanksgiving or Christmas or New Year's or even birthdays or any number of other commemorative days with grief and sadness. The life of our secular holiday parties, for the most part, is focused on cheerfulness and fun. Many have too much to eat or drink, and at the end of it all, they find a huge mound of trash to haul out to the curbside. We're having a good time, some might say as they watch the ball drop from downtown New York. But that pales in comparison with the gift of life that God has given to the world through Jesus Christ. Years ago, entertainment mogul Ted Turner cynically remarked, Life is like a B-movie. You don't want to see it again. Well, this year of the coronavirus is just that for all of us. We don't want to see it. Not now, and certainly not ever again. The most expensive of Christmas gifts recently received pale in comparison to the gift that came to this earth when Jesus was born. Life as only Jesus offers can't be found inside a flashy package under a tree or in a glass with the finest of wines in it. And as we enter this new year, John's Gospel has something to say that's important for us to hear. John speaks of a vision of life so powerful that neither the darkest of places nor the coldest of seasons can overcome it. 
John gives us the image of a glowing candle that pierces the darkness and warms the frigid cold. We don't need to have had a perfect Christmas. We don't need to have received the gift we've so long wished for on this earth. What we do need is to encounter the one at the heart of Christmas, at the heart of the Christmas story, and to know, as the Christmas carol says, Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. And this is where I invite you, to the table where Jesus Christ is our host. Take a moment, if you will, to pause this video, go to the kitchen and get a piece of bread or cracker, and a glass of wine, juice, or other beverage. And afterward, come back and restart this video, and together we'll share in the Eucharist, or Holy Communion, or the Lord's Supper. Welcome back. At this time, we'll share in communion together. This is hardly a meal to rival the tables laden with food of so many holiday feasts. But that's not the point, is it? The point for us as followers of Jesus Christ isn't to gorge ourselves with rich foods and drink. The point is to celebrate the life Jesus promised and the life he brings. On the night when Jesus met with his disciples in the upper room to celebrate the Passover meal, Jesus took the bread and broke it and said, This is my body given for you. Then Jesus took the cup and giving thanks, gave it to his followers and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Please join me in prayer. Our God, we pray for your spirit to lead us each step of this new year. We ask that you will guide us and our decisions and help us that we will turn our hearts to deeply desire you above all else. We want to honor you, O oh God. We want to bring glory to your name and blessing to all upon this earth. We ask that you will open doors needing to be opened and close the ones needing to be shut tight. We pray for your protection over our families and friends and for an end to the pandemic that has so challenged the world in this past year and even to this day. These things we pray that you may be glorified as we are blessed by your love. In Jesus' name, amen.